Hello, everyone. My name is Azrae Bateman. I'm here with screenwriter and producer Aaron Rasan Thomas and actor Shamar Moore. How are you fellas doing tonight? I'm wonderful. I'm wonderful. It's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. So, you know, I've been a big fan of yours. Um, my mom used to have me watching Young and the Restless. What's it like? <laughs> Don't talk Malcolm on TV, girl. Mm -mm. Look at that high yellow boy. Oh, yeah. He messing with his sister. It's just a damn shame. <laughs> He just messing, look, look, don't know who the baby daddy is. <laughs> boy, mm, can't wait till that boy come on TV tomorrow. Mm -hmm. uh, so what's it like? <laughs> something like that. If I was a few years young, I swear, but for Jesus, that boy right there, that boy right there. I mean, I love my husband. May he rest in peace. But, oh, Lord. <laughs> Tell that boy to come over here. I need to cook for him. He's too skinny. That Hollywood done made him sick. Boy, they need to, he need to eat. He need to eat that boy cute. Something like that. So, like so, that. Something like that. <laughs> so what's it like for you, you know, years now, years later, going back, do you ever go back and watch yourself just for fun? You know, I don't, I stay away from the first two years of my career. I, I do. I, I just, I mean, I got them on VHS tape. That's how old I am. VHS. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, oof, you know, but yeah, first two years and a lot of my soul train days, I'm like, ooh, I'm like, but you know what? I, I don't believe in regrets and, and every, every you got to start somewhere. Um, but I, I, but I, I, sometimes I sit back and I, and I'll, I'll go back, but I, I can't watch the first two years. I couldn't stand still. I kept slapping my legs. I couldn't, I just was trying to figure it out. And and then I kind of just took a breath and, and I started to get it. So, but I do, I do, you know, I don't watch myself a lot. I don't, you know, I'll watch myself in the process. Like now with SWAT, like I'll, I'll you know, I, I want to watch myself to learn, not to go, Ooh, look at me, I'm on TV. I've been doing this long enough to know what I look like and all that, but I want to make sure that I'm being authentic to the stories. But 24 years in the game, um, I've grown so much. I've learned so much. And uh, it's a really exciting time for me because... You know, I could say, well, why didn't I get SWAT 10 years ago? I was ready to be a badass and a superhero back back then. And I just believe if you have faith, if you have patience, if you always believe, and it's tough sometimes, but you got to find that inner strength. Everything I've done in my personal life, everything I've done in my career life, all the characters I've played from Malcolm Winters to uh, Derek Morgan on Criminal Minds to Diary of a Mad Black Woman, and whatever it's been in, in my journey has all led to this perfect storm because I'm in the right perfect possible place at the right perfect possible time to take on Daniel Hondo Harrelson and SWAT. So this is just the next chapter of my career and I'm, I'm really excited about what's happening. So for you, Mr. Thomas, um, you know, Soul Food and now, you know, doing your own show, how, how was it? Is it, you know, do you look back and see the differences in the original screen, um, screen rights that you did and what do you, what's your process for that? Well, first shout out to Bennett College and Morehouse, the house. Um, you know, my, my experience actually coming from Morehouse, it, it, a lot of it started there. I went there because Spike Lee went there and I went there because Trey Styles, the character from uh, Boys in the Hood, went there, you know, at the end of that movie. My experience, my life was very much similar to the, the life of, of that character that uh, Cuba Gooden Jr. played in that film. Um, you know, the idea has always been for me is that I knew that Hollywood obviously is not is is a very competitive and and challenging path. But I also knew I, I had grown up in an environment with two parents who are always very supportive and always knew you know you put your mind to it, you're persistent, you put in the work, you do the homework, you know you'll be able to accomplish anything that you want. I always truly believed that. I still truly believe that. And so I was fortunate enough at an, er, an early stage in my career and arriving in Hollywood where. You know, I was able to be around not only successful people, but also successful people that understood, you know, my path, my point of view. You know, I, I was an intern at Soul Food, the series, very early on. I was a writer's assistant there. I worked for talented writers like Felicia Henderson and Mar uh, Baraka Kill, and Salim Kill, and Kenya Bears, who now has created Blackish. Um, you know, there's probably five or six writers from that early stage of Soul Food now who are all off doing their own shows, including myself. So when I look at that period, even though it was early and I was raw myself, um, I look at it as, as a, an invaluable foundation that, that cemented for me that, yes, not only is your voice valuable and powerful, but also your voice is viable in a business sense. Um, and so I, and I still take that to heart to this day. That's one of the things that you know, definitely allowed myself and, and others to put this project together and make SWAT. Mr. Moore. For a good bulk of your career, you've played a, a, you know, a law enforcement role. If you were an actor, 
weren't an actor, would you would you consider being in law enforcement? Uh, not initially back in the, the uh, getting into the game, um, but now that I've you know I've met so many law enforcement officials. Um, I don't know if I'd want to do it for a living, but I have so much profound respect for what they're doing. But uh, but what we are, what I do want to do um, that Aaron has done is I want to go out on these missions. Like we've been invited to go and tag along with SWAT and LAPD and go out, you know, on on cases and things. And you know, they're not going to give us guns and things like that. But we get to literally be in the cars and shadow them. I haven't done that quite yet, but uh, um, I just have so much respect for that what what they choose to do for the sake of fighting for the good and having to deal with so much unpredictable dark and never knowing you know every day you just don't know and 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 the family's having to accept that and and wondering if they he or she is going to come home and it's, i mean that's a big risk it's 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 like it's like you know going into the military it's like you know there's the thing the, the thing that drives these people and i and i i have to show the utmost respect for that but uh I'm having a lot of fun learning all the technical aspects. I'm having a lot of fun playing pretend G.I. Joe and making it as real as I can. I'm a badass from action to cut, and then I go home to my two bulldogs and, and uh, you know, my, my little backyard boogie. So, yeah, I'm, I'm good with just playing pretend but, but doing right by these cats. <laughs> if I'm going to be 100, I'm going to be 100. I know you said that there will be some topical, you know, um, things in there, but will you also draw from, you know, personal experiences from your life? Um, always, always a good storyteller. And it's not just me. You know, it's we have a, a very talented writing staff. Um, you know, I'm working with a very talented mentor of my of, of, of for me, which is Sean Ryan, you know, who uh, who always comes at things from a very character grounded point of view. And it's just tremendously uh, supportive and, and knowledgeable. But we have, a, we have a staff of nine writers, and each one of those writers brings a different perspective to the table. You know, we have a very diverse staff. We have uh, four women writers. We have uh, uh, five writers of color on that staff. You know, everyone kind of has their own walk of life. Single people, married people, young people, middle-aged people. Um, atheists, you know, Christians, Muslims, you know, we're, we're, so when we come into the room, you know, a good storyteller is always going to be able to pull from a grounded place of what is the story about and why do I want to tell it? And we wouldn't have it any other way on SWAT. We, we want people, collaborators, actors, musicians, you know, writers, producers who are always going to be able to pull from things that they care about and are passionate about. Um, and that's the culture we've set up. So, you know, from personal experiences from your life um, to now, are you thankful for those experiences that have now, you know, put you in a position to be able to tell a, a different story? Absolutely. You know, I, I feel as though the experience that I've gone through um, has been a blessing, absolutely a blessing. I don't look at any challenges or obstacles as, uh, as hindrances. I look at them as learning lessons, learning opportunities. And so everything that I am is only because of what I've been and where I've been and who I've been around and who I've been supported by. I wouldn't have it any other way. Um, and definitely everything that I was in growing up in the neighborhood that I grew up with, with the friends that I had, some who are still here, some who never made it. Um, I think about them daily. And we're breaking stories right now for Hondo, a few of them based on real life situations that myself or other writers went through one or two, you know, featuring situations with friends or old friends that I may have had that may or may not be here. So everything that I've been definitely informs what I work on. And like I said, you know, I think any good storyteller operates pretty much the same way. Well, thank you, Phyllis, for your time. Thank be you. sure to tune into SWAT November 2nd, 2017 on CBS.